In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hello, I'm Father Paul, and this is the Good News. The scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, verses 12 through to 19. Now the next day, when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing far from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. So they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who brought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves? And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his teaching. When evening had come, he went out of the city. In today's Gospel from St. Mark, there are two parts to it. The first one was when he was leaving Bethany. It would have been early in the morning and he was hungry. And he saw from afar a fig tree having leaves. So he thought I'd go and get something to eat. But he found nothing, it just leaves. So Mark said, For it was the sea that it was not the season for figs. So he would not find figs. But Jesus said to it, Let no one eat from you ever again. He did this in front of his disciples. It's a mystery why this happened. And we'll probably find out why. If you notice, quite often, fig trees are brought up in the Gospels. When it does not bear fruit. If you recall, the farmer who told his servant to remove this fig tree that was not bearing fruit but he was begged to give it one more year give it another chance and of course with work on the tree fertilizing etc it started to bear fruit in the second part of this scripture reading, when they arrived at Jerusalem, Jesus went into the temple. You could see all the hustle and the bustle and people going to and forth. But Jesus went in and began to drive out those who brought and sold in the temple, overturning the tables and the money changes. You can see money going everywhere. And those whose seats they had who were selling doves. And he wouldn't allow people running through, carrying their different ways through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, 
My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And you have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard this and sought how they might destroy him. They did not like the way that Jesus was talking about the activities in the temple. They feared him and what he is doing and what he has done. And also because the people were astonished at his teaching. And then Jesus, afterwards it says, he left the city. The temple is the home of God. Is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? A house of prayer. It needs to be kept clean. And these people have brought all this in. It wasn't a house of prayer anymore. It was a marketplace. Jesus, the Son of God, was not happy to see this. And he drove them out upturning it, all the tables and chairs. We could look at this also in another way. The temple of the Holy Spirit. This is us who have been baptized, who have received the Holy Spirit into our bodies, our temples. It is important for us to keep them clean and tidy, just like we would do for our own homes. You have, for instance, you might have some guests coming. What do you do? You go run around the house, cleaning up, putting things back into order again. So too. We need to do this for the temple, our temple of God, our bodies, our souls. This is why we also have confession. Because in a period of time, we get dirty. We have things in our bodies that should not be there. Fasting and prayer is what we need to clean our temples, <clears throat> our living temples of the Holy Spirit need to be clean, need to be in order where we can pray and be in the presence of God. Our churches should be likewise, not a marketplace. Today the church remembers a very special disciple, a follower of Jesus. The holy myrrh bearing, equal to the apostles, Mary of Magdala. In some of her icons, you see her carrying a flask. And also, we see an egg, red in colour. Jesus 
at his before his resurrection, Mary of Magdala was the first of the disciples to see that he had risen. She was on her way to the tomb to carry out further cleansing rituals. She had the myrrh in the flask. The egg symbolizes the risen Christ. And she was a woman, very special, to be the first to see that Jesus had risen. So as I said, the church today remembers her and celebrates this feast, this time of remembrance. Glory to God for all things, and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.